Hey, it's a wealthy expat here. As you know, if you watch this channel, I bought a citizenship through Citizenship by Investment of St. Kitts and Nevis. I'm very proud of my passport, and I'm also looking at other passports that I could potentially buy. In the last couple of weeks, I'm really considering getting another passport. Now that I'm not gonna have the US passport, I wanna have a second other passport that I also invested in. And I'm looking at different residency projects and different residency requirements all over the world. And the one that stands out as a potential one that I'm really looking at seriously and I'm considering investing in it is the North Macedonia Citizenship by Investment Program, which is a relatively new program. They're an EU candidate, although I have absolutely no hope for that and I don't wanna be an EU citizen. I'm strongly considering not getting myself involved in the EU just to travel back and forth. I do love Europe, but I don't wanna become a EU citizen because that might become a hassle in the future for my taxes or anything like that. The only program that I would consider is the Portuguese Golden Visa, which I'm also looking at as a potential program to consider. We're gonna talk about the North Macedonia Citizenship by Investment, why it's attractive, why it might be attractive to you, and how you can do it. North Macedonia has two requirements. You can pick either one. The first one is 200,000 euro, which is about 220, thousand US dollars about 215 right now the currency rate is quite good per adult applicant for a period of at least two years in a private investment fund established in the Republic of North Macedonia in accordance to the laws to be eligible to apply for citizenship this particular citizenship program they say that it can take two to five months we haven't seen enough applications yet to really see okay that's how long it'll take no, we don't have that time frame, but they are promising two to five months, so that's quite fast compared to St. Kitts, which took me six and a half months, typically takes six to eight months and so on to get these password programs in the Caribbean. This one seems to be a lot faster, and you have a period of at least two years of those 200,000 euros. So you essentially invest 200,000 euro in a fund. It's a very small country. It's not really the safest country ever, but as long as that money is retained there, it doesn't really earn any interest. If it earns three or 5%, whatever, I can make more just investing in Bitcoin, but I get it back after those two years and I also get the passport after three to five months or two to five months so that's definitely extremely interesting you also have another option 400,000 euro in a direct investment in new facilities employing at least 10 people for indefinite period of time for at least one year so that's one year 400,000 euro employing at least 10 people and you do need the certificate of clearance you do need a CV a curriculum vitae basically just a resume of yourself and proof of financial standing this is normal for many countries they don't really require net worth tests in the Caribbean but they are requiring financial standing police clearance that's definitely possible and obviously you can invest into facilities and employ people with this option I'm not really looking at that option I don't see why people look at that option when there is the two hundred thousand dollar option so I'm definitely consider this one in the next couple of months two hundred thousand dollars that's not that much and you just invest it for two years you would also budget about twenty to thirty thousand euro let's say thirty five thousand dollars for fees of the lawyer of the due diligence of the processing of the passport itself printing the passport and all that that's definitely something that you should budget into this program so it's not really that much you're investing let's say 25,000 35,000 you're investing the 200,000 but you're getting it back after two years for a passport that is relatively good compared to other passports that are offered if we look at the visa requirements for North Macedonia this is the passport right here it's a very small country right next to Albania and Serbia and all these different Balkan countries and you can see the map here the countries that are in green are the countries that you can visit or slight greenish yellow those are the ones that you can visit with visa on arrival as well as China you have some transit visas where you can stay two or three days just like the Ukrainian passport as well as Russia you do need an invitation to visit Russia but I don't think many people are visiting Russia right now so you do have Japan which is a quite hard country to get into for example with St. Kitts and Nevis you don't have Japan you have the whole of the Schengen area you don't have UK you have a nice amount of Latin America some African countries as well as Asia this could be a very interesting passport why specifically for people that have Caribbean passports or passports that might lose access to the Schengen area what I'm fearing and what I'm thinking about is what's going to happen in the next let's say three to five years St. Kitts these other citizenship programs are being highly criticized by the European Union and they might lose access to the Schengen area so what I'm thinking, if St. Kitts loses access to the Schengen area, I have multiple ways of getting into Europe. I could get a golden visa in Portugal. I could get a residence permit in Poland for like $2,000. There's many programs out there, but I also would like to have another passport that gets me that access as well. So North Macedonia would have that access to the Schengen area and it would have access to many other countries that are quite hard to access on the St. Kitts passport, like for example, China or Japan. Those are two very hard ones to access with the St. Kitts passport, as well as North Macedonia and their citizenship program is much less well known 
then St. Kitts and Nevis, then Grenada, then Dominican, and all these others. So for example, if I apply for a visa for Canada, let's say, or New Zealand, or wherever, they're not going to automatically assume that I bought that password because it's very popular that people buy these passwords, like the St. Kitts and Nevis. It's quite popular. Many people know that you can buy it. So they're not going to automatically assume, oh, this guy bought this password. If I show up with a North Macedonia passport, they might think, okay, this guy maybe got it through his grandma, or maybe he lived there a couple of months or a couple of years or something like that. So they have less scrutiny for a passport that is from a small country and with a relatively new citizenship program. Those are all the things that I'm thinking. If I don't go for this program, then I'll definitely go for the Portugal Golden Visa. Becoming a Portuguese citizen, that is the next level, but I'm not really thinking about that right now, just in case the EU goes through some changes later on, they apply EU whole taxation or people that are from the EU that they want to leave the EU, they need to pay taxes for a certain amount of years. So I do need to think about this carefully when I'm applying for the Portugal Golden Visa, but that's definitely something that I'm looking at. There's no residency requirement apart from seven to 14 days, and you, you can get permanent residence in the EU in the Schengen area, so that's definitely interesting. As well, as there are a lot of countries that with a Schengen visa or with a Schengen residence permit, you can enter them visa-free. So for example, some passports, they don't allow you to visit some countries in Latin America or Africa or things like that. You can enter them, if you have a Schengen visa or if you have a US valid visa or anything like that. So that's definitely something I'm looking at, things that I'm considering for the next couple of years. I'm constantly looking at new options for citizenship by investment. Obviously, I'm waiting on El Salvador to have their Bitcoin citizenship by investment. I'm definitely going to be a client for that one so I can have multiple passports around the world that give me freedom, typically from small countries like St. Kitts, for example, that are not going to chase you all over the world. I'm not going to go and get Canadian citizenship so they tax me worldwide or they come chasing after me all over the world. Definitely not going to do that. So I'll get them from small countries. North Macedonia is the one that I'm looking at right now. El Salvador is a potential one. Maybe I'll even do another Caribbean program and I'll keep you updated as to what programs I'm going to do, what plans I have for citizenship and what programs you should consider as well as residency programs that you can consider. If you want to know what it's like traveling on a St. Kitts and Nevis passport and a citizenship by investment passport, are they respected? How do border guards look at those passports and what problems you might run into? Check out the video that's going to pop up right here. Traveling with a St. Kitts and Nevis passport is going to be very insightful. People love that video. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, the like button down below. I'll see you on the next video. I am the Wealthy Expat.